In this video, we're going to explore the new interpolate curves node that's coming with Blender 3.5. So here's an example of what you can do with it. If I turn it off, you'll see that I only have three little strands of hair. I got one over here that has like this big, you know, arch to it. I got one down here that's fairly straight. And then I got one right here that kind of does that. And when we turn it on, so you can see what it's doing. Uh, it's like the closer they are to down here, the more straight they are. The closer they are to this point, the more they look like that point. That's the gist of it. So that's what we're gonna be going over today. To gain access to the new Interpolate Curves node, you'll need to install Blender 3.5, which is currently in alpha as of the making of this video. This node lets us take a group of curves called guide curves and a series of points and fill the space between the curves with new curves. So for example, so we had a curve like that and then we had a curve like that and we had maybe three points. You can imagine like this would be a little bit like that. This would, you know, maybe start to get like that. You know, so as it fades between here to here, these are gonna fade bet between the two curves. I think you get it. It's mainly used to control hair, but it can be used anytime curves are involved. There's a bunch of ways this node can be used. In this example, I'm going to be using the UV map so the curves face outward. Over on my Patreon page, I've uploaded this as well as seven other examples to help you get started with understanding how this new node works. I recommend that you play around with them to see what they can do. All right, so to begin, let's start a new project and go ahead and delete the default cube since we won't need that. Now let's add in a Suzanne and then add in an empty hair by going to add curves, empty hair. We need some curves for this to work. So with the empty hair selected, switch over to sculpt mode and add a single hair on one side of her head and add another on the other side. We also need these curves to be different or otherwise Blender will try to interpolate between constant curves, which isn't very interesting. So I'm gonna take the comb tool and give them some distinct shapes as long as they're different. All right, something like that. All right, now let's go over to the geometry node tab. You can remove this node with control X since we won't be using it. Now let's plop in an interpolate curves node. And you'll notice the curves disappear. This is because we don't have any guide curves yet. Let's add in a join geometry so we can see the curves for now. Now I want to distribute these curves along the surface, so let's add in a distribute points on faces. Now remember the group output is the hair that we created earlier, and it's not Suzanne, but we need the Suzanne mesh, and the quickest way to do that is just to drag her like that from the outliner, and then we're gonna connect it up like this. As soon as we make the connections, you can see what it's doing. The curves on one side of her face are more similar to the curves we created there and vice versa for the other side. You may also notice that it looks like straight dog doo-doo, right? They're all facing the same direction. Now you may be tempted to use the normal for the up point, but this is actually incorrect. So let's break that connection. To get it to work properly, we're gonna need a sample UV surface node. So let's go ahead and add one of those in there. Switch it over to vector. The mesh is going to be the Suzanne model. and the output value needs to go to guide up. 
and the input value needs to be the normal. Finally, create two named attribute nodes. And set them both to vector. The first one needs to be the UV map and connect it to the source UV map. Set the second one to the UV surface coordinates and connect it up like that. You'll notice that it's still not giving us what we want. And that's because, surprise, we were supposed to use this. Once that's connected, it'll work like normal. I like to add a switch node just after the interpolate curves. And then wire this back to the group input. So now I can turn it on or off as desired because that helps, helps to keep it off so then I can add Add in like another one wherever I want it. So say I wanted all the curves on her chin to be facing down. I could add in one facing that direction roughly. And now when we turn it back on, they're all, well, they're going to come straight out because that's how the normal is. So that's why that's working. But the shape of it is what I'm talking about. So it's given the proper shape that I'm looking for in this area. And you can, of course, you know, bump this up. That might help for you to visualize it. So with this interpolate node, we could make a hair on her chin downward or off to the side on her cheeks. We could make it flow like it flows naturally on a real monkey. And we would only need to position a few hairs and Blender would blend them together smoothly. But that would probably end up being a bit too smooth, but there are tools that allow you to add some jitter that's all for now. Don't forget to check out my Patreon for more information. Have a good one and take care.